Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're going to talk about some valve train terminology. We'll be discussing the different types of valve springs, the components surrounding the valve springs, what the numbers mean when you're shopping for valve springs, and what to look out for when you're changing valve springs. Before we get into the details on valve springs, let's discuss why we would be upgrading them in the first place. In the pursuit of more horsepower, we're using the aftermarket camshafts that have more lift opening the valve further and more duration holding the valve open longer. This changes the rate in which the valve is opening and closing in the pursuit of better cylinder filling and a higher engine RPM capacity. With the increased lift and duration of these larger camshafts, you can easily run into valve float. Valve float is when the valve train loses control of itself. So if you have a rocker system, the tip of the valve is inconsistently in contact with the tip of the rocker. And if you have a bucket system, the bucket is inconsistently in contact with the tip of the valve and or the camshaft. Valve float can be as minor as some chattering on the locks and retainer or as damaging as dropping a valve and destroying the engine. In order to avoid engine damaging valve float, our first line of defense is a valve spring that has additional pressure to keep the valve in control as that larger aftermarket camshaft opens and closes the valve. When shopping for a set of aftermarket valve springs, you may run into some terms that you don't understand. The first one of those terms we're gonna to discuss today is installed height. The installed height is the distance from the bottom of the retainer to the top of the valve spring seat cup or valve spring seat locator. Almost all engines have something between the valve spring and the cylinder head casting itself. As the valve spring is in motion, it tends to vibrate and move around and you wouldn't want the valve spring digging into the cylinder head. The second term we'll discuss today is the seat pressure. The seat pressure is the amount of pressure that the valve spring is under when the valve is closed or at rest at the installed height. This is generally measured in pounds. Next, we'll discuss open pressure. The open pressure is the amount of force the valve spring is under when the camshaft is at max lift. Because each combination in each camshaft may have a slightly different max lift, it's important that you know your installed height so when you deduct the valve lift from the installed height, you can know your open pressure. Another term you'll see when shopping for valve springs is max lift. Max lift is the maximum amount the valve spring can be compressed safely while avoiding coil bind. Coil bind is when the valve spring stacks up on itself and becomes solid. If you have the engine run into coil bind while there's still camshaft lift available, you're going to have damaged components. Now let's talk about different types of valve springs. You're commonly going to see three different types of valve springs. A single valve spring, which we would consider like a stage one upgrade. A dual valve spring, this is something you're gonna move into when you're moving into high boost levels, high RPM levels, and high lift camshafts. Somewhere in the middle, there's a beehive valve spring. Beehive valve springs are commonly used in a lot of modern OE applications because of how they stack up on each other, dampening their own harmonics. Harmonics are the enemy of most valve train systems. Not all engines suffer from harmonics the same. If you had an engine with small components, shaft rockers, and a timing belt, that's a much easier system to tune than an engine that's rooted in the 60s or 70s with a camshaft, lifter, and a push rod that when accelerated, the push rod can flex, driving harmonics into the system. Remember, as we mentioned earlier in the video, high lift camshafts with large amounts of duration are going to accelerate that valve faster as it opens and closes. The faster the valve is opening and closing, the more demand that's put on the valve spring. Another option you'll find when shopping for valve springs is the retainer material. You'll see retainers in both steel and titanium. If you're building an engine that is a push rod based engine like an LS1 with a large diameter retainer, it's best to move to a titanium retainer to save some weight on top of the valve spring. If you're building a multi-valve engine that will be raced in an endurance setting, steel retainers are just fine because the retainers don't weigh that much to begin with. If you're building a drag race only engine, again, titanium is fine, steel just tends to last a bit longer. Take note, if you're working with an engine that has titanium retainers or titanium valves, it's best to keep brake clean away from them. The brake clean is corrosive to the titanium and will damage them over time. Another thing you may notice when shopping for valve springs is different surface finishes. Not all valve springs have the same surface finish. Most valve springs are shop peened where they use a very fine steel ball and blast it against the surface of the valve springs, smoothing it out. Some manufacturers take it further and go into a tumble process, but basically you wanna make sure that the valve spring has a very uniform surface with no voids in it that can create a failure. 
Keep in mind that valve springs are a mass produced item. If you're installing valve springs at home, you want to inspect those valve springs for any surface irregularities, making sure that the OD of the valve spring and the ID of the valve spring match and fit inside your cylinder head. If you have a valve spring that doesn't sit down into its seat cup or seat locator, and you have enough valve spring range on paper, but because they don't install correctly in your cylinder head, you can create a mess of problems. If you're installing valve springs at home, you wanna have a replacement set of valve seals on hand. Valve seals are not reusable and are often removed during a valve spring change. As far as break-in procedures with your new valve springs, it's common courtesy to heat cycle a set of valve springs before you head to the racetrack. So start the engine up, let it come completely up to temperature, let it cool completely, and then you can head off to the races. Keep in mind when shopping for a set of upgraded valve springs, you wouldn't just reach for the highest amount of spring pressure available. You wanna buy a spring package that offers the right amount of pressure for a stable valve train environment. If you need any help with this, feel free to reach out. One of our dedicated build advisors can help you through every step of the way. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.